Hi, I'm James Wilkinson. I've been a travel editor for over 20 years. On this show, we're going to take you to some of the most amazing places in the world. We're going to go inside the best bars, restaurants, hotels, and a lot more. First up, we're in London, and fittingly, we're here at Heathrow Terminal 5, the home of British Airways. Welcome to the Concorde Room here at uh, Heathrow Terminal 5. This is British Airways' is a very special lounge. It's for invitation only or if you're flying first class. In fact, it's probably one of the best airline lounges found anywhere on this planet. There's uh, amazing cocktails here, a lot of classics actually. There's a dining room with beautiful restaurant food. There's a day spa and uh, views of the runway. One of the best features about the uh, Concorde room here at Heathrow Terminal 5 is British Airways has some original Concorde seats in this room, in the boardroom. I flew Concorde when I was 10 years old and it's uh, so good to see these seats again, but uh, very practical as well. It's a great little room in here to get work done or a meeting with some colleagues. Well, uh, we're here at the brilliant uh, British Airways Arrivals Lounge at Heathrow's Terminal 5. Uh, I always come into this lounge after a long flight, uh, even if, from a short flight actually. It's nice to come in here, freshen up, have some food and get ready for your, your big day ahead in London. Or if it's a weekend, just nice to get in when a lot of hotels don't have any rooms available for you either. So when you come inside to this lounge here, we've got the Elemis Travel Spa over here, which is a very consistent in terms of British Airways for uh, what they have at Heathrow at Terminal 5 for their spas. Now, over here we have a very, very comfortable lounge area and uh, you've got a whole bunch of couches around here. Down the back are almost a hundred shower cubicles. You can jump into a shower, freshen up. Uh, they'll also do a pressing service for you if you need your suit or some shirts pressed. And, uh, and you come in here, you've got some TV on and, uh, and some magazines and uh, I'd naturally sort of recommend picking up one of these ones and finding out what's happening in London and then off you go on the Heathrow Express into town. We're here at the uh, Metropolitan Hotel, one of Como's great hotels in London. And uh, we're talking interior design today with uh, Lindsay Coppock, who is responsible for the interiors. And Lindsay, um, this is one of the great boutique hotels in London. And uh, what kind of inspired you when it came to the refurb of the hotel? Well, with the refurb, it was very important that we took the existing concept and rooms and brand, if you like, and brought it forward so it was much more in tune with what today's guest is really looking for within a hotel room and a hotel experience. And obviously popular for business travellers and leisure travellers. So when you're designing a hotel like that in London, in such a busy business travel market, how important is it thinking about those two markets on how the, how the room works from shape and form perspective? It's incredibly important and that was part of the development of the new refurbishment to make sure that all the IT and up-to-date technology was incorporated into the room. What we've done with the areas at the moment is we've done quite a bit of doubling up 
because not all guests are au fait with technology and some, perhaps more the older traveller or older business person and would prefer to be able to literally switch a button on the wall to turn the lights off of rather than do something on a very high tech on an iPad. So how important is future proofing from an interior Very important, we've done a lot of that especially in this hotel, but we do that with all our projects generally. I think that's the thing of the moment really, to make sure that we do future-proof where we can. The, the Como are a very forward-thinking company and obviously have become one of the best boutique um, brands in the world and they like all their hotels to be unique and different. We work very, very closely with the owner and really realise her vision. Extremely stylish and, and has a very, very good eye for detail. So it's, it's making that sort of work really and making that happen. The clever aspect is to create something with longevity that is pretty much timeless. 100%. Well, Lindsay, you've done a fantastic job here. Thank you so much for your time today in, uh, in one of the London's best boutique hotels. So we're here at Holland Street Social and uh, we're here with uh, amazing restaurateur and star chef Jason Atherton and Jason this is this is your baby here we we're just talking before about it and your very first restaurant and uh, the, the love of, of your life I guess from yeah. a restaurant standpoint isn't it? Absolutely. Well after my wife of course and my children this is the, absolutely the love of my life and, and for me it's it's so important that but we've never taken a penny out of this restaurant. Everything we have, we've funded, gone back in. Everything like we were just discussing there, creating our own craft, um, our beer. We want to make it very special to here. We do our own wine uh, down the Loire Valley. The investment in crockery, china, cutlery, just trying to reinvent it all the time to keep Holland Street in its, its class as one of the best restaurants in the country. And we want to keep it that way. And that takes massive investment. And, and you know, I'm in it for the long game, not the short game. And, and, I want to still be here when I'm 65, which is another 20 years away, and still be studying my chef jacket, cooking away, and uh, with a few more grey hairs, I assume, and, and, and just be you know, content with producing great food, and that's what I do. Yeah. A lot, lot of restaurateurs don't like getting back in the kitchen, or chefs don't like getting back in the kitchen, they just hop around different restaurants. You'd love getting in the kitchen. Yeah, I mean, for me, I, I don't know, it's, it's strange, actually. Um, it's, the love affair I have of the kitchen has, has never been stronger than it is today, and, and, I, and I just love creating new food, I love the development process, I love coming up with new ideas which then when the guest sits and eats or they experience or they interact with, it's just, I love it, you know? I love it. Mate, what are some of your little London tips? I mean, if I want a, a good cup of coffee or if you've got a favourite bar or restaurant at the moment that might be in your family but might not be in your family, where would you send me? Go down to Mill Street around the corner here in, in Mayfair, uh, there's a fantastic little pub down there serves the best pies in the country. They only do pies, they sell bad crisps, but they, they, they only sell pies. They've got, they've got their own pie master, so he just bakes pies all day, and he bakes about 200 pies, wants the gone, the gone. And if it's steak and kidney, the real, the real classics, you know, the chicken and leek with mustard, and their HP sauce, steak and kidney pie, pint of lager, done. Perfect. Jason, thank you so much for your time. Thanks mate, yeah. cheers. On the next episode of Wayfarer, we're here in Hackney, in East London. But to find out really where to go and what to do, I've enlisted the help of two of the industry's great fashion legends. Well, down on the Thames is one of the most popular designer hotels in the British capital. We're here high atop the Dorchester Hotel in the beautiful Harlequin Suite.